Welcome to Project Gran Hakaimito. We are starting a new farming operation in the province of Cordoba, Spain. Back in 2017, we bought 45 hectares of Dehesa land. This is the beginning of our story. Follow us along. In October 2017, the farm looked dry and pretty abandoned. There were still pigs and cows around, roaming the place unrestricted. Our first job was to set up camp somehow. We needed a place to live on the land full time, but we weren't ready to simply build a house. We came up with a different solution, and I will tell you the story in this video. A real farm needs some animals, so we got a horse, pura raza española, and we got some cows too. Welcome back! Let me start by showing you how the land looked back in June 2017 when the realtor showed us around. When we got up to the compound, we got a look at the Iberian pigs the seller was keeping. Further up the dirt road we came across a well with an old gasoline powered pump. There was also a water tower with good capacity. Strong winds had knocked off a huge chunk of the roofing over the pig shelter. On a later visit in November 2017, we found horses and a donkey. We learned they belonged to a neighbor and somehow found their way in. At that time, the seller's cows were still present. They were scheduled to leave sometime in January. The material to build a temporary house was on order. We used the wait time to clean up a bit and repair a fence to keep the pigs and cows out of the future building site. As we didn't want to build a permanent structure, we decided to put a subfloor on top of concrete blocks. Despite our best efforts, the cows found a way to visit and check out our subfloor. No damage occurred, which was good. By mid-January, the cows were gone and we took delivery of our Mongolian yurt. The truck driver expected us to have a loading ramp, which on a farm you don't usually have. Thankfully, a neighbor was close by and offered to help us with the forks of his tractor. Getting the huge package out of the truck wasn't that easy. Despite the challenges, a few minutes later we had the package next to our building site. Next day we put up the first wall section. Overnight our tools got stored securely in one of the old buildings, which had a door with a working lock. Shortly after the first one we had another wall up. We fixed two pieces of plywood to it to see how the outer part of the wall might be. The neighbor who helped us with his tractor asked us for a favor. He doesn't have any water source on his land and we had access to the creek. It was a good opportunity to get started with actual ranching early on. So we got the material for an electric fence. Together we built a fence and made it hot. The next day his cows checked out the new path to the water. Obviously, some tried the fence and learned that it is not to be touched. February came and we made good progress. More walls came up and we began to fall into a rhythm, assembling the walls quicker and quicker. After just two days, the structure did look like a real house. Once we added more plywood sheets to this side and also began to add roof rafters, the impression of actually getting somewhere with this grew on us. In March we got some heavy rain the creek showed what it's capable of carrying, and we were thankful to have a truck with good ground clearance. Nobody got wet. A few days later, we had beautiful sunshine. The place started to come to life as the grass began to grow. For the front porch, we got some treated wood posts and installed them. Here I am as a happy builder trying to get a selfie up on the roof. Juan was happy about our progress as well. Same as for me, it was his first time building a wooden house. Keep in mind that we are building without any drawings at all. It is our first time and we really don't have any clue about what we are doing. So the moment of truth for our crazy idea came. We wanted to keep things as simple as possible, 
and construct just enough house to have a shower in the kitchen. We thought that sleeping in a Mongolian yurt might be cozy. The day came to put the idea in contact with reality. We unpacked the beautifully painted door, made some sort of a funnel from yurt to the house, and then realized, well, that's not going to be a pleasant experience. After some deliberation, we decided to take everything down again and shift gears to building a few more walls. This is going to be our sleeping quarters. And this wants to be an office with a nice view. We were in April now and spring was making all the white flowers show up. Beautiful. The view from the bedroom wasn't bad either. Now that we had the other half of the house, it also needed a roof. We put up some more rafters and then continued to add sheets of plywood to close the roof. We then moved the table into the house and yes, indeed, it felt pretty amazing being inside. By the end of April, spring was in full bloom and seeing all that new grass around, we felt that we should get some more animals. One of our neighbors is raising merino sheep, as it is common in this area of Andalusia. So we visited him and came back with four cute little sheep. Juan showed them where the water is at and they were happily drinking and grazing. We were using an electric sheep net to control their whereabouts a little bit. However, they are going to need a bit more protection from predators and the sun. So we set out to build them a corral. It had a door and now we were also able to close it up at night and know that these sheep are not going anywhere. Their corral had a huge boulder inside and as you can see, they were already doing some sheep play. On our new farm, we are trying to apply holistic management practices. One element of that is rotational grazing. Grazing animals and grasses have evolved together and form a system. Grasses need to be bitten by animals in order to grow well. But being bitten too frequently is bad for the plant, and not being bitten is also bad. We assign a small area to a mob of cows and let them graze for a short period of time. Then we move them to the next area. The cows will return to any area that has been grazed when the plants in that area have fully recovered. Rotational grazing stimulates root growth. Plants with longer roots will be able to lift up water from down below and thus all other plants in the plant community in a given spot will also benefit. That in turn makes areas more resilient to drought. We also provide minerals to the animals to help their immune system. It was time to finish up the roof and install insulation. For insulation we use rock wool, 25 cm in the roof and 15 cm inside the walls. Holistic management and permaculture are good siblings. Another term that can be used to describe this is regenerative agriculture. One of the key elements is to retain as much rainwater on the farm as possible. Nature shapes the landscape by means of erosion, animal movement and pioneer plant species over thousands of years. On a small farm of a given size, with boundaries that have to be respected, we have to help nature a bit. A key element of permaculture is doing earthworks, and for that we got ourselves a used backhoe. We also got some forks that can be installed by replacing the bucket. That enables us to do small earthworks whenever we see an opportunity, and we can also move heavy things like hay bales around. Here is an example of how to improve the land by retaining rainwater in swales. Without the earthworks, the water would flow rapidly downhill and take all the important topsoil away. In this example, a swale was dug to funnel more rainwater to the tree. The idea behind permaculture earthworks is to keep the water for long enough so that it can infiltrate the soil where it helps to nourish plants instead of washing the soil away, which eventually would lead to the formation of a new desert. By mid-June, it was time to really get cranking on our temporal house. We hired an electrician 
to help us out with the wiring and installed the house wrap membrane all around. Next up was to get the Mongolian yacht set up again and this time in a way as it was intended to be used. We made a simple wooden floor on top of concrete blocks and then we could proceed to put on the sheep wool insulation and weatherproof tarp. We had also hired another person, welcome Angel. The yacht will have a wood stove in the center. To protect the wood from hot ashes falling out, we put some metal on this part of the floor. Hooray! Here come the cows. At the end of June, we bought 20 calves from a neighbor. They got delivered in two small trailers. They are a mix of Charolais and Limousine breeds. Those are beef cows. Of course, they give milk, but not as much as a cow bred for milk production. As they got off the trailer, they immediately started to explore their new home. Let's follow them and see what these guys are up to now. Hmm, these youngsters discovered something. There we were without some of the calves we just received. They all went back to mama. Over the next few days, one by one, they all got brought back to us and this time we made sure there was no escape. While the horse did not challenge the fence forming the lane around the house, the cows didn't bother and ran it over. So we started to put in some metal fence posts and built a physical fence. Some of them kept escaping. The escapees were put in confinement and on rations. That helped them to understand. We actually had one which was quite persistent and it took a few months for her to get used to the new home at our place. Here is an aerial view of the farm and its surroundings. This is our story so far. Please join us next time to see how the second part of 2018 went for us. Granha.caimito.net is our public website. And once we have actual food production going on, we'll have a shop where people can buy food items. The other one, bosque.caimito.net, we use internally to plan our work and manage the farm. You are welcome to have a look around at the unprotected content to see what and how we do it. Thanks for watching.